Hello my soccer universe, after much deliberation I decided that the second video this uh, early week will be again about Ligue 1 and the Eredivisie seeming uh, because I have to say uh, that what I saw Sunday evening in Marseille that was pretty special and I am usually loath to use in the thumbnail and the jersey that I'm wearing the same team but this was probably the best a version of PSG that you could imagine despite an injury but what Messi and Mbappe more emphasis this time on the latter one uh, pulled off was world-class and thoroughly enjoyable and I know that this section of video seems like PSG and Ajax TV I actually think the latter is not so much true anymore because we actually have a true title race but Ajax are very well in that one um, but they're chasing Iowa and we have to see how it uh, evolves the specter of another head-to-head -head is lurking just before the international break so good stuff happening in Netherlands as well the title race is definitely still on and it was also um, a weekend where you know all the disappointments from the European campaigns and there were plenty of disappointments for Ligue 1 teams and also for Eredivisie teams had to be just taken off uh, <laughs> and, and, and we'll see there were some uh, impressive results there were also some hangover results so let's go I would say we'll start in the Eredivisie where uh, you know most of the action happened actually on Sunday where all the title contenders were playing um, I mean at Z played Sers as an evening guy 2-1 over Cambuur but it was basically uh, Feyenoord had the chance to um, go first and yeah Sittard was very generous gave a lot of gifts and own goal at first then the goal by Vifa was a rocket but then uh, the Jimenez goal was already there was a rather a stupid defending let's put it whatever giving the, uh, the ball and so it was 3-0 at the half seemingly all clear however Sittard came out pulled one back through Duarte had potentially uh, the chance to do a second one and then again a defensive error, uh, error allows, allows Igor Peshaw to make it 4-1 and then Siovas pulls one back laid on but at that point was already decided uh, from my perspective very important is that Trauna after his operation made a comeback and I would very much see a last player former last player lift the Eredivisie title uh, so I think while I'm typically more Ajax this season in the Eredivisie I really would like Feyenoord to win that one just to change it up a little bit uh, speaking of Ajax um, had a rather tight and nervy game against uh, Vitesse who uh, were well in the game it was rather even go ahead through Van Hinkle um, after uh, Ruli had a big chance saved and then immediately after David Klausen can equalize after free kick it was within two to two minutes and then uh, a Tadic free kick Alvarez heads in the 54th and Ajax very routine win getting off the bad karma from the loss to Union Berlin and in the league Ajax have now five wins in, in a row ever since Johnny Haitinga took to go over Ajax look actually quite strong um, we also then had PSV having a rather efficient win again PSV having uh, being ousted by Sevilla but winning 2-0 uh, at least Fabio Silva getting an early one then uh, uh, Twente equalizes just after the half and then Luc de Jong with the next chance basically 2-1 two -two and Xavi Simons uh, makes it 3-1 and thus we have in the Eredivisie the standings as I said it's very much still a two-way race uh, because AZ got ousted more or less by Feyenoord yes you cannot really allow them back in but five points seems to be plenty enough Feyenoord three ahead of Ajax Ajax holding the better goal uh, difference so that's gonna be a big one once they meet and uh, no one really can afford to slip up but that's exactly what might happen I don't think this is a rather straightforward season in the sense that uh, the top two will win out um, except for the head to it because uh, look there are already seven draws and the occasional loss in there so that makes it definitely interesting uh, PSV at Z I think are out of it and Twente also losing another uh, biggish one 
is also more or less out of it already as well but you know might uh, challenge for you might challenge for europe but i think it's also a steep way up there um same thing from the expected stance i mean the top five are the top five it's pretty much set in stone it goes even further than i think of it we can even say that for the top seven pretty much set in stone what's happening in the air divisi uh we have also some cup action coming up this week um with Herren Wayne against Feyenoord probably the most uh, standard tie as I said in the previous week it's a very even a very nice draw that all the three big ones were self separated and the fourth big team in there in Utrecht according to the current standings uh, also self separated so there's a good chance to have a really good semi-final I give you the next two rounds and then the week after we have Ajax against Feyenoord so this is kind of all prelude to madness if you like Feyenoord face Groningen who are down there uh, where Ajax have to play against Nijmegen where they not too long ago played a draw uh, Vitesse against AZ uh, is the probably the standout fixture on that match day and then match day 25 let's do uh, Feyenoord against Volendam and Herrenveen against Ajax uh, potential trap game not really to be honest uh and yeah AZ will also pick bigger points against Groningen uh potentially moving over to league uh uh we had early in the, uh in the on the weekend Lille beating Brest 2-1 uh, we'll see Brest is not going into the relegation zone and uh Lyon get a rare win at Loli Angers who are also uh, down there loss is also kind of falling away remember they were right up there in a the title chase have been uh, really uh, falling uh, as of late with a rather bad string of results. I think they only uh, in the last five games only one win and two losses, two draws. So uh, losses miracle is coming a little bit to an end with that draw at Montpellier. Uh, Auxerre surprise win at Lorient who have been flying high. Um, Strasbourg Clermont won one doesn't help either one. Then we had the Breton derby, two teams that got eliminated uh, in the midweek. Uh, Doku. Uh, decides that one with a 1-0. Um, then Stadras beat Toulouse 3-0, which is uh, remarkable for multiple uh, um, reasons. Stadras having had a really good, good run, still largely um, beaten ever since the new coach took over. But also Toulouse has been uh, one of the most free-scoring teams in all of Europe with 41 goals. Oh, they've conceded 45, so it, go, it goes both ways. This time they are not scoring. So uh, that, I think, was uh, remarkable. The goals came early in the 4th and the 7th and the 3rd one threw up the Hamid in the 68th. Monaco continued the hangover by the elimination through Leverkusen, losing at home 3-0 to Nice. And especially the way that the first two goals both got by Mofi came. It was both deep balls from uh, Dunch and uh, Thuram. Not the one playing for uh, Gladbach, but uh, his, his younger brother, Lilian Thuram, father sitting, of course, in the stands. Uh, long ball in Mofi is running a straight straight goal and uh, Conco converts and he assists Thuram in the fourth for the third for making a third one, which was a wonderful shot. And that, that, that was the game. I mean, there was just um, some changes afterwards, but uh, Nice were just super efficient, playing also a very adventurous jersey, the purple-orange ones. Which, yeah, uh, was interesting. But let's be honest, it was all about Le Classique. And while the atmosphere, as usual, was great, great choreography by the Marseille Ultras, has to also be said, but then it was all PSG. And I don't even say it was all PSG, because it was all two players, the two players, Mbappe and Messi, who combined crazily now uh the one th the one downer of this one is that president kimbembe had to come off and he's out f at least for the rest of the season danilo Pereira um came on for him however it didn't matter much i mean the game it was kind of you know, uh, feeling and, and and so on and with the first real action messi finds mbappe who makes it one nil in 25th a little bit later uh, mbappe assists messi who just has to put it into the empty net. Uh, two really well-played goals. Messi should have added a second one uh, just a little bit later because uh, he was so free and just put it over the bar. Uh, it The two of them combining, it seems to be a whole different level. And I have said it before, and I think many will ag ag agree with me. 
Uh, as good as Neymar can be, the team looks a little bit more balanced when they have just those two focal points up there. Um, and I think Mbappé enjoys a whole lot more being assisted by Messi, who is really playing for Mbappé. And then he li he likes to also give back. It looked really well what what two were doing, and it was very much epitomized by the third goal. Mbappe has the ball, gives it to Messi, who lobs it over the defense, only for Mbappe to volley it home. 55th fifth minute, it's 3 0. It's all done. There were not a few chances for Marseille, but Donnarumma, who had, I think, birthday, uh, had to save that one. But overall, it was a rather impressive win. And I said it last week this late Messi goal against Lille, where they really came, came back, this could have reinvigorated uh, PSG. And Mbappé being back is also gives PSG a completely different dimension. Bayern, watch out for now. I would, I would say I think that the um, construction of PSG per se is not that great. But if those two have that freedom and find those spaces, uh, it's really, it will be really, really hard to stop them. That major result means, of course, that uh, PSG are now very much in control of their own destiny. It's now eight points, and I think we can say that this probably was the title because OM needed the win to get back in, in the title chase. Uh, Monaco also falling away. As a loss, uh, Rennes tries to come from a back. It's, it, it's very weird. The, the, the weekend was all going for PSG because every other team that could challenge them was falling away. And so PSG looking rather good. 99% chance of winning the title. Um, it's a rather broad midfield, but I'm also looking at the relegation battle where Strasbourg sits now on top of the pile uh, that could get relegated. I know not the Mopé are giving minuscule chances, but I think it really starts with Strasbourg, Océa Jaxo, Brest, Troyes and Angers for going down. And let's see what the expected standing says. Uh, um, yes. Osea, Jacques Sautre and Angers, exactly those uh, teams, but there have been a few movements there. Up top, not much has changed. Uh, the question is, will PSG reach the higher uh, point with 97 or will they bomb you more like 90? But I think they are heading straight for the 90 point mark. <music>